In this video, I'll give you a tour of GeoGebra and how to use the probability distributions. First, go to the website geogebra.org slash classic hashtag probability. You'll want to click on the distribution tab and then below the picture of the normal distribution, there's a drop down box that says normal in it. You can choose different distributions. So there's the normal distribution first, student refers to the student's t distribution, and then you might become familiar with the chi-square or f distribution or the binomial distribution, depending on your class. We're going to work with the normal distribution. We have to give the normal distribution parameters, mu, the mean of the distribution, and sigma, the little O with a little hat looking symbol, which is a standard deviation. Once we tell GeoGebra the distribution parameters, then the shape will change. So right now we have a standard normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. The graph has a shaded purple region and two little triangular borders down on the bottom axis. If you click and drag on any of those little triangles, you can change the area of that shaded region. So when I slide the triangles to the left and to the right outwards, then there is more shaded area in the graph. And that's reflected down there in the little gray box as the graph has a smaller z-score on the left and a larger z-score on the right, we have more area. If I slide those borders towards the middle, then I have less area. So you can see the empirical rule in action if you slide the edges of this shaded region to negative one and to positive one. And you'll see about 68% of the data falls within one standard deviation of the mean. And if you need to make really precise endpoints, I just clicked and drag, you can type into the box negative one and then click into the other box a regular one. So you don't have to put the positive sign. And when you push enter, then the area will show up there in the bottom. Now the reason why we have middle area graphed is because we have three buttons that we can choose. These two little braces are facing inward, so we're finding area in the middle, but we can choose one of the other buttons and find area to the left or to the right of a z-value. So if I choose the, the brace that opens to the left, I will find area to the left. And then in the graph, I'll have one endpoint to change as the upper bound so the probability of x less than or equal to a z-score, and then the probability is given just to the right of that. So let's find the probability that x is less than or equal to 1.96. Push enter, make sure to push enter, and the probability changes, so 0.975. So that's almost two standard deviations above the mean. So two standard deviations or less, we'll find about 97.5% of the area. Now if I want to find the area on the right side of this cutoff, 1.96, you can click the brace that opens to the right and then the area will flip. So you can also type in 1.96 and then you'll get the area 0 0.025. So it's the complement of the last answer. So let's change the mean and the standard deviation. Let's say I want the mean to be 100 and the standard deviation to be 15. When I click on, click in those boxes and change the mean and standard deviation, you'll notice that the x-axis changes. So we have a different scale to our graph because the spread of the data is now larger than before and the center of the data is now shifted to the right. You can still answer the same sort of questions. What is the probability that we get values between, here it just showed up, 85 and 115 and it gave us about 68%. If I want to know the probability of having a score of 100 or larger, I can shift the triangles and then I'll get an answer of about 50%, which we expect. 100 is the mean, so it divides the graph in two with the symmetric normal distribution. You can also type in 100 for the low end point, and then you can make an arbitrarily large number for the right end point. Let's say a thousand. That gets us pretty far off to the right side given our standard deviation of just 15. And then push enter and you get an answer of 0.5. We can also use the normal distribution in reverse. So let's say I want to work with area to the right or to the left, which is a pretty common question in statistics. 
And if I want to find the top, let's say 5% of scores, I could try to estimate it with the border by dragging the triangle until I get about 5%. Uh, there we go. You might not be able to get too close. Um, that's pretty close. Looks like at about 124.6. That's about 5%. The top 5% are above 124.6. I can also type in the number exactly, 0 0.05. Push enter. There I get 124.672. If I want area on the left side, I can click the brace that opens to the left. And again, if I want the lowest 5% of scores, I put in 0 0.05, push enter, and then I get the, the change there. So think about the inequality sign as pointing to this direction. X is less than or equal to 75, so it's on the left side of the distribution. When I was finding area to the right, X was greater than or equal to 75 and then I had an answer. So you have to be careful of where the X is and what the inequality sign is and the order that this is written. Sometimes it helps to read the variable first, X is greater than, and then the number. Remember the alligator eats the bigger number, so X has to be bigger than the 75. So X greater than or equal to about 75 is how you'd read that. So there we go. Those are the two ways that we can use the normal distribution. We can put in parameters and a cutoff for x and then get a probability answer, or we can start with a probability and find a cutoff for the region.